Mora Oral is a show like few out there. To call it another claymation adult show would be to undersell it. To call it a cynic criticism of religion would be to lose its nuance. If I had to pick only one thing that makes Mora Oral stand above your average crude adult animation show, would be that Mora Oral wears its heart in its sleeve when it comes to its protagonist. Mora Oral at its core is the story of a kid that when confronted by the reality of an uncaring world and the fact that practically every adult around him is but a bundle of broken pieces strung together, he chooses to be kind, and moreover, he continues to choose to be kind, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to talk a bit about the intergenerational cycle of violence. This is when within the family unit, children are exposed and are subjected to abuse. These children who grow to become adults that have been exposed to violence throughout their lives then perpetuate this abuse. Whether they think it's normal and a role they now fulfill as their parents once did, or come to regret the pain they inflict to their own children. Moral Oral is about choosing to break the cycle. The series starts losing the loss of its universe with a zombie outbreak. While not much continuity can be gathered from the first batch of episodes, which the creator Dino Stamatopoulos wrote in about a month, they serve to establish the foundations of the characters and their dynamics. Oral is a wide-eyed kid that only admires God beyond what he admires his dad, and he seeks to do right by both of them. When he is taught something God taught him to do or be, he goes above and beyond to honor that, which always goes terribly, terribly wrong. At the end of the episode, his hijinks are cut short by his dad, and after a spanking, he is taught that there is actually a last commandment about where he went wrong. Oral seems blissfully unaware of the cracks beyond the facade of every adult in his life, from the loveless reality of his parents' marriage to the origin of his brother. This all culminates in the season finale, where as Oral desperately tries to hold on to the hope that God is there, about to save him and his family any moment now, the show ends and his hope goes unmet. Fun, huh? While the status quo is ultimately preserved, Oral's world continues to expand in the second season. As we learn more of the characters in the city, Oral too starts to grow from his experiences. But then, everything changed. I can confidently say that the season 2 finale, Nature, is one of the best pieces of television. It is the boiling point for the whole series. And that single event sends aftershocks throughout the rest of the show in such a way that I found it at times overwhelming watching season 3. In retrospective, this is a moment Dino Stamatopoulos considered he had killed Oral as an innocent. And that might be true, but isn't that the point? Season 3 is largely affected by the reality of its production. Impressed by the season 2 finale, Dino was encouraged to push towards a more serialized and dark storyline. A few episodes in, that push proved to be way more than what Adult Swim had bargained for, and the show was axed once and for all. This meant that out of what made it into a season, Oral's story arc was cut, and out of 13 episodes, we only see Oral post-nature in two. Season 3 as it stands is considered by many to be a masterpiece. We get an in-depth look into the city, and we finally truly poke the wounds of many citizens in Moral Town. It offers emotional catharsis for some characters, while explaining why some others will never find it. But it's missing something. Moral Oral at its height is missing Oral. After recently watching this show, this bothered me so that I had to look into what was missing. I found out that Oral would have had a storyline where his grandpa, now a dying man, would move into his room. I also found this. You know, it's weird. It's kind of like anytime someone shows some kind of niceness towards someone else, they don't know what else to do. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's probably because niceness doesn't really happen too much around here. So it feels odd when niceness does happen. And it feels so odd that... It's unnatural. Maybe even wrong. Maybe being nice here in Moralton feels dirty. Wow. So anyway, you want to play with me? Well, it's getting late. Oh. What were you thinking? We can go get your sundial and check the time. Um, okay, Joey.
Let's do that. Hooray! For me, the biggest loss in Moral Oral was not never getting to see the show move on to being called Moral Town, nor never following up on whatever was heavily set up regarding Mrs. Figurelli. Moral Oral's biggest loss was never getting to fully explore Oral after nature. Oral after nature is someone that has seen the world for what it really is. He has been permanently physically affected by its darkness and has been stirred at by the consequences of following through with the violence inflicted upon him. And with this new weight, he chooses to be kind. He chooses to grow to be kind at every turn. Unfortunately, reality is that we just skip to the end of Oral's journey. Well, that is not unsatisfying, what after seeing Oral suffer enough for a couple lifetimes, truth is we missed a really unique chapter in Oral's growth. It just wasn't your time, Mora Oral. I wish it had been. I really do. Thank you so much for coming by. Please share, subscribe and support if you wish to see more content. See you soon.